right, all right, all right. Let's see if everything's working here. I'm having a little problem with my system. Matt, how you doing this morning? Hey, can you hear me? Am I going to have to go out and do a little management on here? I'm wondering if you can hear me. Can you give me a little sign over here that you're hearing me? You can hear me. All right. That's what I was worried about. It was come up in the middle and it said it wasn't working. So I guess if it's working, you can hear me. Everything's good. Thanks for coming online with me and uh, for being here and helping me out with my audio settings. Glad everybody be could uh, make it. And let's get started here. We're going to come over here and let's see if I can get my little face up on here. There we go. I'm still learning. I'm still new at this live thing. And so Still trying to get all of the bugs worked out and the kinks and figure it all out. But we're trying to watch the live session, the first morning bell session, and um, see if we can't get a trade or two off in the morning bell session. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. So we have up in the upper left-hand corner, we're watching the Dow. We're here in the futures market. Let's come in here and turn on our little banners so you can see what we've got going. We are in trading futures through the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This is not the New York Stock Exchange. When trading through Chicago, there are no pattern day trading rules. So you don't have to open your account with twenty five, dollars actually $30,000. Because if you open up your account $25,000 over in the stock market today trade, and you go one penny below $25,000, they shut your account down. You can't day trade. So you have to actually open it up with like $30,000. So you have a little buffer there. So there, you don't have to do that over here in, the, in Chicago. That's only a New York thing. <coughs> A lot of people don't realize that or understand it. So we can go long and short, penalty free, no interest. You don't have to pay interest. You don't have to borrow the shares. You don't have to do any of that stuff. So uh, you just need to have special software that accesses the Chicago exchanges as opposed to the New York exchanges. And that's what we're using here. We're using Track and Trade. Track and Trade is a software platform that's designed to access the, <clears throat> the futures market over in Chicago. Now, you can get some software programs. There are some big Walmart-style brokerage firms out there that uh, have both. And they have both. Uh, you can trade futures and stocks in the same platform. But that's like, to me, that's like mixing your peanut butter with your with your chocolate. That's not a good idea. Well, I don't know. Reese's Pieces are pretty good. But you don't want to mix those two markets. They're like they're like black and white to me. The difference between the futures market and the stock market is enough that you don't want to have those try to be figure those out on the same platform. So the reason I love track and trade is because it has a futures version that is dedicated to the futures market. And all the rules in it are for the futures market. And so because I use a trading platform and not just a, a charting application, that makes a big difference. It's very important that when you use a trading platform, it's a big that is dedicated to the market that you're trading, especially if you're trying to day trade. So my platform is Track and Trade Live. You can go get a free 14-day trial over at Track and Trade. It is a platform. It's a trading platform. It's not a charting application. Now, of course, it does charting, but the advantage is that it also has the trading capabilities. And the trading capabilities gives you the ability to drag and drop orders on the screen. You can drag and drop options. You can It can trade for you. You have automated order systems, so you can drop an order on there, and it'll take over and start to trade it for you. It does all kinds of really cool stuff that just a, you know maybe free charts you get on the Internet don't do. And so it's important that you have good execution, and that's why you need a trading platform. Whether it's this one or another one, don't go use those free charts on the Internet. You're going to lose money. Most people come to me and they're like, man, I've tried trading futures or I've tried trading day trading and I lose money. It's probably usually it's it's not your fault. It's, it's probably the platform you're using. It's probably the software you're using. Um, probably using shitty software. Just get some good software and it'll make all the difference in the world for you, I promise. So the biggest thing is please subscribe and ring the bell. I want you to be notified when we go live. Uh, and if you don't ring the bell, you won't be notified. Okay, there's the morning bell. The market's taking off. You can tell it's moving because market it just broke uh, uh, the average true range to the upside down here on the on the uh, Russell, and so that is a buy signal right there. If you want to take that morning bell buy signal, but oftentimes the market will flush up, flash up high, drop back down low, and then wipe everything out. And it's just really tough on the very first bell. In the hindsight, it looks easy. It's like why didn't you just take that first buy signal? right there off that NASDAQ and that thing went to the moon and you would have been rich, rich, rich beyond your wildest dreams. 
Well, because look at the, the S&P up here. The S&P broke that same pattern, and now it's flushing back down and going the other direction. The one thing we haven't done is we haven't um, gone and looked at our, our news yet today. And I think that this is a good time to do that. Is this market's flushing back down, coming down all the markets? See that? If we would have taken that first buy signal when it broke those yellow dots and said, we're just going to go long on the buy signals, we'd all be in trouble right now. <clears throat> so that's why we don't do that. Because this market just has a tendency to flash back and forth across that average true range or across those VWAP lines right at open. And so let's give it a little bit. I like to give it five or 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. You know, you have to wait for this market to settle down in the first part of the morning. And then you can start trading. And I like to trade, you know, top of hours. So 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. If we have to wait all the way till 11 o'clock, we've probably done something wrong or the market's just not moving. We want to be in there and have our money out of the market by, by 10 o'clock or by 11 o'clock. That's my time. All right, my time. I'm in the mountain time, so 7.30. I live in a little... I live in a... During the summertime, I live in a little mountain town i have a mountain cabin town that i live in and um i have a little summer home up here and that's where i'm trading from right now and then in the winter time i go south and that's where i go trade at the uni I, I go and work at the university teach class at the university and i'm down in the warm weather so i go back and forth um, between the north and the south depending on the weather so i chase the sun sun wor worshiper but uh right now <clears throat> just who is Lan Turner? I'm scrolling across the bottom. Lan Turner's former instructor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the Board of Trades Education Center. Currently an instructor of finance at Utah Tech University, and that's where I'm at. So, oh, look at the now look at the the Russell back above the the VWAP, and it's taken off and it's going to the moon. But we wanted to go and look at the the economic news, so we need to do that quick. And I'm going to just pull that up, slide that over here. And you can see the news that happened this morning happened at 6.30 a.m. So 6.30 in the morning, we had another one at 6.30 that wasn't quite as high, the retail sales uh, uh, executive autos. PPI, this is the producer price index, all right? And it's a pretty high one. It happened earlier this morning, but it's kind of affecting the market. The producer price index in the U.S. increased by 0.7 in August of 2023, the highest level since June of 2022, and exceeded market expectations of 0.4 rise. Prices for goods advanced by 2%, driven by a 10.5 surge in energy costs. Meanwhile, prices for services increased by 0.2%, primarily due to rising transportation and warehouse costs. 1.4%, excluding volatile items such as food and energy, the producer price index increased by 0.2%, following a gain of 04 in the previous month. On an annual basis, producer price inflation reached a four-month high of 1.6, while the core rate eased to 2.2, making the lowest level since January 2021. So that's bad news, all right? Bad news indicating that, hey, the producer price index, things are getting way more expensive, way more expensive than anticipated. But then we had retail sales. So retail sales in the U.S. advanced 0.6% month over month in August 2023, higher than a downwardly revised 0.5% rise in July and beating forecasts of 0.2 advance. The data continues to point to robust consumer spending despite high prices and borrowing costs. Sales of gasoline stations recorded the biggest increase, 5.2%, as gasoline prices soared above 10%. Retail sales are not adjusted for inflation. Other increases were also seen in sales by, of closing and stores, electronics and appliances, health and personal care, food and beverages, food services and drinking prices, general merchandise stores, motor vehicles and parts, and building materials and garden equipment. And the other, on the other hand, sales were flat at non-store retailers and fell for sporting goods, hobbing, hobbies, musical instruments, and bookstores, miscellaneous store retailers and furniture stores, excluding autos, gas, building materials, and food services. Retail sales edged up 0.1%. So people are buying stuff. They're buying the stuff that they need to have, clothes and food and personal health stuff. They're not buying stuff that they don't need to have. So furniture and autos and gas and that kind of stuff so oh now look at the market we thought we were going to go bullish on the market and don't, don't, well look at the the russell now the russell's been doing that this has been common for the russell the last couple of weeks in that we see the russell take off and go long while the other large caps fall and go short so that's kind of a usually these markets all travel in the same direction they all go the same way 
So we kind of want to be mindful of that and watch and see. We want things, to, we don't want topping tails and bottoming tails when we're trading the high Kanashi bars. These are the indexes and these are, um, the, these are, these charts are candlestick charts, but they're called hike and ashy bars. Okay, if I turn the hike and ashy bars off, this is what normal people, normal people, this is what um, other people look at when they, they're trading. See how they're getting all this chop too? They're seeing all this. Well, the hike and ashy bars are kind of a smoothing component that's added to the hike and ashy bars and kind of helps with the trend. Those yellow dots on there, they're nothing more than just the average true range of the market. And I've got those set to 1.1. So you can see my settings on the average true range over here. And there's the average true range. So 1.1, and I've just got it set to yellow dots. And so what's happened if the market crosses above the average true range, I consider the market to be bullish. If it crosses below the average true range, I consider the market to be bearish. And so I only look for sell signals or sell opportunities below, or I look for reversals sometimes, but I look for buy signals above. Okay, if the market is bullish, I look for buy signals above the average true range. But if it just sits there and whipsaws back and forth across the average true range, well, the market's neutral and it's not going anywhere. But this makes it difficult. You can't really use the ATR at a setting of 1.1 if you're using standard traditional uh, candlesticks. So I like to use the high Kanashi bars. So it puts that smoothing component in there, makes them a little bit easier to read. And then you have um, the high Kanashi bars have the the topping tail and bottoming tail. So you read them a little bit different than you read the ones that are um, the traditional the traditional um, price bars, the, high, the candlestick bars. So you have candlestick patterns, and they still kind of apply a little bit in the in the high Kanashi bars, but we have other patterns that we like to use in the high Kanashi bars, like clearing bars and flat bottom bars. Flat bottom top, flat bottom bars, flat top bars. If we get in flat bottom bars, a series of flat bottom bars, that's good. That's what we're looking for. That's an uptrend. If we're getting a series of flat top bars, that's good. That's what we're looking for. That's a downtrend. But anytime you're getting tops and bottoming bars, that's not good. That's when the market is neutral and it doesn't know what to do. That's called indecision. So these markets are very indecisive right now. As you can see, we're coming into a little pennant formation. Actually, this is more like a little triangle formation. And we're coming in. There's a little triangle formation just like that. See that happening over here? So we got one happening over here on the on the S&P. Usually we have a breakout one direction or the other. And once the market breaks out, it usually trends in that direction. So this is a pennant formation. We're kind of getting a lot of pressure as the market's coming down. And it's coming down into this point. And we would expect it to break out one direction or the other. Now, in this case, we're going to expect it to break down because we are in below the average true range. Notice that we have a sell signal up here. So this sell signal is an indication that the market is bearish. And then we're gonna get a triangle and then we would expect it to fall out the bottom of this thing. But the, market, the bars are really highly indecisive. We're getting lots of topping tails, and lots of bottoming tails, and that's not good. That's, so those are called clearing bars. So it's going out and it's clearing out all the stops and limits to the upside. It's going down and clearing out all the stops and limits to the downside. And then it's coming back to, to the center of the, the tick. And those those are bad bars. We don't, want, we don't want to trade during that time frame. We want to stay away from the market. We don't want to wait for the market to smooth out and start to become clean and trade nice and clean. Even in the pre-market session, we did not have a very clean market. We had a couple of uh, trends in here. You can see this trend here in the pre-market session on the Dow. And I traded places with the Dow and the S&P because I put the S&P in place in first place because yesterday the Dow was being really stupid. And I usually like to trade the Dow, but the Dow was being so stupid I put it over here on the left-hand side. I don't know if that's a good idea because in my brain, my brain always thinks of this, the Dow being here on this one. So I'm looking at the Dow on the upper right-hand corner of the S&P. I've been doing that for so many years that when I switch those out, I better not do that because I'm going to get confused and forget that I've moved those. So my brain tells me that the Dow is supposed to be in the upper right-hand corner, the S&P is in the upper left-hand corner, the NASDAQ's the bottom right, and then the Russell's the bottom left. Okay, there it is. It's breaking out the down to the downside of that triangle wedge formation. See that? Now look at this one here. We need to reset all of these lines in here. So we're going to reset those lines across the top. So it'll be a little bit more accurate with our line. So there's our area of support. That's our support. And that's our resistance. So this one here has already broken out to the downside. You can see it broke those 
the natural trend line to the downside right there. And it's being weak. It's not doing a, it's not breaking out strong. And notice that the S&P is staying still inside of that triangle, still inside that little triangle formation. And it's got lots of topping tails and lots of bottoming tails. It's just waiting for the market to decide whether it wants to be bullish or bearish. And the Russell is down here. Russell's kind of a, he always does his own thing. Because it's the small caps. These, the S&P 500, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, those are full-size markets. Those are the large cap markets. And so the, the Russell is not unusual to see him do his own thing. I've seen lots of good good comments in here. Glad to see you guys made it. How far is Mountain Time off of New York? Uh, Mountain Time off of New York is um, two hours. So we're at 7.30 open and they're at 9.30 open. So the little signpost pointing the way. Uh, another question, uh, Googled in New York is two hours. Yep, two hours. B. Taylor, glad, glad to have you back in class. Good to see you here. Glad to see you guys, the regulars in here. We got Matt in here. Got the regulars all here. So it's fun to have you guys come and show up. It's great to have you. It'd be fun to get a, a larger group. So if you guys want to help me get a larger group, one of the ways you can do that is to go down in the in the in the comment section below this video and write a comment. Just write anything. Say, I trade stocks, I trade futures, I trade forex, I'm a day trader, I trade options, I trade, you know, just give me some kind of little information down there about you. And I'll write back if you have any questions, write your questions down there. Of course, we're here, so you can write your questions here too. But if you write down in the comment section, then Google sees that as, oh, there's engagement on the video and they show it to more people and we can get a larger group in here. But, uh, you know, small group's good and fun and there's other people that come and watch it after the fact too. So we're having a good time here watching this market. Uh, I'm expecting it to fall. I, I am expecting it to fall. We're getting a nice little pullback right here on the on the NASDAQ. And there's our break of the NASDAQ and it's starting to come down. So we've got our break on the on the uh, Dow. There's the break on the S and P. Of course, the got the break here on the on the Russell. Now they're all do. They generally travel the same. And when they get all synced up, that's what you really want to see. You really kind of kind of keep the Russell. You know, give it a little wider berth because the Russell does a little bit different things than the other three markets once in a while. But they generally like to sync all up and all do the same thing. And as you were watching yesterday, we were seeing that with the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow, they were all syncing up and they were all getting ready to rise. And so I traded the Dow. If you remember, I grabbed the Dow, but yet the S&P and the NASDAQ are the ones that took off. And the Dow was the lagger. And because it was the lagger, actually, I think the Dow took off first. And so I got in on there and then the other twos followed and I actually outperformed it. And the Dow just kind of wandered. And we ended up stuck in a trade that didn't go anywhere. Of course, it then come down, stopped us out. And then we called it for the for the hour, wait for the next hour. And then it took off after that. So that's the luck of the draw. We got three three major markets that we trade here in the Russell, of course. So we've got the the four major markets that we're trading here. Now we're coming down and we're gonna test that VWAP. Now VWAP is important because other people think it's important. All right. Notice that the NASDAQ is just ignoring the VWAP, it doesn't care. So, but we're going to look at, see how the S&P re, uh, reacts to the VWAP and the Dow reacts to the VWAP because the market often comes down, it'll hit the VWAP. Everybody sees that and they're like, oh, we should buy it. The VWAP is a bounce off the VWAP. So oftentimes it'll come down, hit that VWAP and start to rally once again. The NASDAQ's not doing that. It doesn't care about the VWAP. The Russell, it's still the VWAP, still quite a ways away, but we've got the Dow and we've got the S&P coming down and testing the VWAP. So we'll see if it comes down and bounces the VWAP and starts to rally once again. Again, we had good news and we had bad news. We had good news in that people are spending money, but they're only spending it on things they need. They're not buying extra stuff. And then the bad news was that prices have gone up again. Everything's just getting way, way more expensive. Of course, gasoline here is almost $5 a gallon. I don't know what gas is in your areas, but right now for me, gas is almost $5 a gallon. Four hour supply zone on the Dow and we are back up to the same level. So I'm looking for a short signal. So this is 
the little signpost pointing the way. He's he's short. He's bearish on this market. So let's see what happens right now. So if we go out and look at the longer term time frames, you can see, let's go do that while we're waiting for this market to bounce off the VWAP. So we'll come in here and I can just grab this portfolio review right here. We'll go out to the daily chart and you can see that we're still kind of just going through that triangle wedge formation that we drew out yesterday. Um, so the market's still very neutral in here and we're just kind of waiting for some sort of a signal or a sign for this to break out. So if we look at the um, if we look at the the patterns that we're that are building here, this is the X one A one S, and then of course it fell down. It broke the blue lights, but it never continued down at this point. So we would have expected this market to come down and continue the break down past that blue light right there, and it didn't do it. Now is it going to do it up here and continue the breakdown? Very well could. Or it could come up, break out the top, break that blue line. We'd need that intercept to come in and then break out and go up to the to the upside. And that would be an A2. If it broke this previous high up here, that would be an A2. All right, so this is what we're looking for. This is what we're watching. We're just watching a nasty neutral market. So anticipate a lot of whipsaw. Don't anticipate a lot of nice trends unless we can get this thing to break above a previous high, which we're doing right here now. You can see right here uh, on the on the S&P 500, oh, I switched that again, didn't I? I'm gonna put that back. So this is the Dow. So you can see on the S&P, we're breaking above that previous high right in there right now. So that's important, it tried it, failed. This one here uh, on the uh, Dow, <laughs> now I'm starting to hesitate. Am I on the Dow or the S&P? So that's coming across here. But yet we still got this area of support coming up the top. I want to teach you a lesson. I don't want to miss the market, though. I don't want to stay too far away from the market. I want to teach you a lesson about one of my favorite patterns. So this thing, okay, see how it dropped out of the bottom of the uh, wedge triangle formation only to bounce off the VWAP and come right back up to the point. That's real common. A lot of traders won't even take the first break out of a triangle formation because they want they expect it to come back. And we generally draw a line right through the dead center of the point as the, we get the breakout. And the market comes back, generally touches that dead center point, turns and falls once again. So we would expect, except for we got this VWAP down here, and the market's not being tradable right now. I don't see it as I don't see this as a tradable market. The Dow is starting to show promise. All right. And the, of course, the <clears throat> the Russell over here has got a lot of promise. Look how the Russell is lower highs. I always tell people if you're going to new traders, <clears throat> focus on the Russell first, because <clears throat> the Russell, although kind of the weird duck of the of the four markets, it has a tendency to trend nicer when it starts to trend. Now that's the, the, the key is when it starts to trend, it has a tendency to once it gets into a trend, it stays in the trend a little bit longer. It does a nice job of, of trending. <clears throat> and it's a smaller market, so you're not risking nearly as much. If you go over to the NASDAQ, that's a huge market and that's a scary market to trade because the NASDAQ, you got to really be confident when you get into that thing because just your stop can rip your wheels off three, four, five hundred dollars. So on the Russell, it's not nearly as bad. Now it's coming down. The Russell's coming down. We're going to see how it reacts to that blue line, that that uh, that VWAP. The one I've got my eye on is the Dow. And the reason I'm hesitant to take a trade on the Dow is because the S&P and the NASDAQ are going down. Now this is bullish. This also could be bearish. We could come in here and take a reversal because the other two markets are falling. <clears throat> the Dow is rising. What we look for, and we're bullish because we got the average true range on our side, we look for a little two bar pullback and then a continuation of the uptrend. The problem is the other two markets, all three markets are falling. The only one that's rallying is the Dow. <clears throat> Don't really want to go long if the other three markets are falling. That's That's bad voodoo in there. But that's interesting. We may get a turnaround on the on the Nasdaq and the S and P and on the Russell, and they may turn and start to follow the Dow, because the Dow's starting to go up strong while these markets are falling. That's that's called divergence. So we got divergence between the two markets, and that's not generally what we want to see. We want to see convergence. We want to see the markets all doing the same thing. But we oftentimes get a leader, 
and the leader will take off. And oftentimes the leader is the Dow because it's the smallest of, of the, the, three, the, the, the smallest quantity. The Dow only has 30 stocks in it. They're big stocks, but has only has 30 stocks. Look at it go. And the, the NASDAQ has 100 stocks and look at it fall. The S&P, of course, has 500 stocks. And look, it's kind of a little bit more neutral. But the, the Russell has 2,000 stocks in it. Remember, these are indexes. So there are baskets of stocks, and all those stocks have to move in the same direction for that market to fall or rise. If only one stock moves, it doesn't <coughs> affect it very strongly. But when you've only got 30 stocks, one stock can affect it quite seriously versus 500 or versus 2,000. <coughs> So even though the Dow looks like it's a beautiful uptrend, which it is, it's in divergence with the S&P and the NASDAQ. Okay, now the Russell looks like it wants to bounce off the blue light and start to rally. Lots of indecision here. Okay, we're getting a, a reversal here. The, this looks like a topping formation on the Dow. And the NASDAQ is still falling. And so is the S&P starting to fall. I'm going to expect the, the Dow to fall too. Oh, we're on the wrong chart. Got to, got to make sure the chart you're trading on is highlighted. We're going, to, we're going to look for a reversal and a fall on the Dow. If it does, oh, look, and then now the Russell's starting to rally. Ugh. We could get a, a, a pullback on the Dow and then a continuation of the uptrend, get an A, B, C, D pattern. But where that thing's dropping like that, ah, it's a little scary to take it on either direction because you don't know. It should be bullish. We should be getting all excited about the Dow saying, we're going to go long. We, we love the Dow going long like this. But where the other markets are all dropping like that, they would need to reverse and start to rally with the Dow. So we're getting that rally off the Russell. It looks like the S&P wants to switch directions. It looks like we're getting a bottoming pattern down here on the NASDAQ. We're getting a topping tail and a bottoming tail. We got a little tiny bottom tail on the Dow, which means that that thing probably popped down. It might not reverse though. It might pop down and give us the two bar pullback that we're looking for. There's our flag. Okay, remember, market is flagging. So it's flagging. So we're getting our little pullback in here, lower highs and higher lows. Now we're getting a lower high, but we're getting lower highs in an uptrend. Okay, we're up, the bullish. We got a few more bars than usual. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven green bars up before we got the, the turnaround. So I could have taken a short position here, but I think it might come down, spike that yellow dot with its little needle. Just stab it, stab it with its steely knife and then turn and start to rally once again. But I want to see the second bar stab it too. I want to see the next one come down and stab it again. And then we can get a second bar. We've got five seconds left on this bar to take a long position. So oh, I'm on the wrong chart again. You got to remember when you're trading four charts, you got to select the one you're going to trade. Okay, here we are. We're going to take a long position, <coughs> which is counter to what we should, you know, it's a scary place to be taking a long position. It's an ABC pattern, and that's what we like. But we want the Nasdaq and the Russell, are, and even the Na the Russell and the the S and P are now all going bearish. So it's a stop order. So it must break a previous high. It's got to break the previous high and prove that it wants to be bear bullish again before we get in. We're not just going to jump in with market orders because we don't want that type of emotional decision making. We want the market to tell us, "Hey, I'm I'm going to go long." And so it just broke the previous high off of that minor pullback, that little flag. The market's starting to go long. So we're long the market at this point. We took one position, one contract. So we're very cautious. Now, I know that all you have to do when you start being successful in finding consistency in your trading is increase the number of contracts you're trading. Okay? So, and then you make more money, double, triple, whatever, however much more money you want to make. You just get consistent at being good at picking these directions. And then the thing is, everything else is going the other direction. So we're going to play a, a reversal. 
This is an advanced strategy. It's not a beginner strategy. So what happens is I've got a sell three quantity in there, trailing stop, one price bar back. And that's why I have my, my quick reference numbers in here, one, three, five, seven, nine, uh, and 11. And it's kind of funny. It's like, why doesn't land just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven contracts? He goes one, three, five, seven, nine, 11. That's because those that's a reversal strategy. So what happens is it will reverse my position and increase my, my quantity. So if I go long with one in a situation like this, where it's very, un, it's very unlikely this thing's going to actually continue to rally with the, with the NASDAQ falling, the S and P falling, and now even the Russell looking like it wants to fall and the Dow going in the total opposite direction is probably not going to continue. And it didn't. Okay. So now we got a, an indecision bar and it pulled back and now I reversed the position and added one. So we've got two positions going short and it looks like it's dying on us is what's going to happen. Probably like yesterday where the stupid market goes in decision and it won't go long and it won't go short. It just whipsaws back and forth. So this is where I come in and say, okay, if you want to go back long again, oh, and I got to keep that chart. Come on. Now I'm running out of steam here, talking too much. All right. So now we got another reversal. So if it decides to break and go long once again, we take our short two off and put on three long. It gets dangerous. That's why I say you got to be careful with this strategy. I call it land secret sauce, and it can whip your reels, wheels off if you play it wrong. And you just have to be careful and only go into it a couple of levels deep. You don't want to go too deep into it. I've got it all the way up to 11, which is pretty crazy. Look at this NASDAQ just going down, down, down. The S&P is going down, down, down. And our Dow is being stupid. It doesn't want to go up or down. Did that to us yesterday too. I usually have really good luck with the Dow. Dow's been one of my favorite markets to trade. And yesterday and now today. Okay, look at the look at the Russell. Russell's popping hard. The uh, S and P looks like it wants to give us a, a rally, which is forcing the the Dow long again. So we've now reversed again to the Dow. Now we need it to go decisively in our favor. We need it to move. <clears throat> and the problem is that that took us down with those reversals. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I can add my profit taker in here and get my money back. And you know I like to do that. I like to get my money back once I've lost two or three trades in a row where I got beat up. I like to just kind of capture some profits and then we can reset and look at a different market and see if we can't find a, a place to, to make some profit. So that's why I like to increase, go from one contract to two contracts, to three contracts, to four contracts, to five contracts, if it's going to continually reverse, because then it doesn't have to move very far to recover your losses. You recover your losses and you try again. The whole name of the game, people have to realize that trading is not about making money. Trading is about not losing money. And until you figure that out, you're not going to be able to make money. So we need to have a market give us a nice, clean setup and a nice, clean rally out of the setup. If it gives you the setup and then it sits there and dawdles back and forth and whips you back and forth, well, that's not a clean setup. That's not what we're looking for. And that's what rips your wheels off so rather than saying well i think now the market's going to trend for me even though it hasn't been trending i'm gonna you know take a big risk and anticipate that it's going to trend for me well that's not a very good time to be taking a big risk so just get your money back and then wait for another setup and then you want that setup to go see how this setup didn't decisively move in our favor it had some whips in here back and forth so that showed weakness in there now it's a little pullback it's a little tiny wedge right there i call that a, a shelf and there it goes so we made 180 bucks on that on that move not very much but it was enough to pay back our losers and get us back to even ground i know a lot of traders will tell you don't do that don't trade to get your money back once you get into the trend you got the trend go with it and see how far it's going to go and play it out i know a lot of traders will tell you to do that and you can do that i'm not here to tell you how to trade i'm just here showing you how i trade 
And had we stayed in, yeah, we'd be a lot better off right now. We'd be up a whole bunch of money because I just took my profits and I had three contracts. I could have been three contracts long. I could have probably just taken off one or two and let one go, right? So there's different strategies for taking different things. But I was starting to get down. I want to be cautious. I want to be careful. I'm here live with you guys. I don't want to take a big big chance and run myself into a big hole. That wouldn't be something wise to do. I'd rather just end up with $20 green than $500 or six or $800 in a red doing something stupid. So well, don't worry. There's lots of opportunities to trade. We still got, we're only, we're 30 minutes into this eight hour day. So lots of opportunities. Don't get all threatened. Don't get FOMO. Don't get fear of missing out. Oh, land, you missed the perfect setup. It wasn't the perfect setup. It whipsawed back and forth in there. The perfect setup would have come up, hit, spiked that little yellow dot, and then taken off and kept going. It didn't do that. It spiked. The other markets were going divergent, and it started to go sideways, created this little formation, and then it started to go, and that was a little bit better setup. But we had gotten down. It had taken some of our money away. So in my opinion, I was better off taking my profits, getting myself back to green so I don't feel st stupid in front of you guys with a big red chart when I go quit. And then I'm also feel better about waiting for another setup All right we took a couple of shots and we got stopped out we took, took a couple more shots we got stopped out so then we took another shot and we made money and we got our money back i think that's a good trade a lot of other guys would look at that and say oh you could have made a lot more money yes i could have but i'm still here to fight another day i'm still here i still got a green i'm up 15 dollars. i'm back to zero I'm back to green that to me that's good that's good it to you that should be good too <laughs> little signpost that's that's a good comment tom williams taught me that one learn not to lose yep exactly the name of the game when trading is not making money it's not losing money is what we're supposed to do we're not supposed to lose money okay so if you can not lose money, then that's when you can make money. If you're back here to fight another day, you're here to another fight another another war, another another setup, then that's good. Because you can easily hit your daily loss. Um, you know, if you're not doing that. If our if our daily goal is to make five hundred, okay. So in this class, our daily goal is to make five hundred. And if we, and, and we also hear, and our daily loss is, is 500. If we lose 500, we have to stop trading at least for an hour. We have to wait for the next hour to set if we lost 500. And then you can come back and try again. You can't just say, oh, well, $500, I'm down. I'm just going to keep trading. I'm going to keep trading. I'm going to keep trading. That's how you blow your account up. You have to either come back the next day if the market's not being good enough to trade, if there's not enough setups, then... <clears throat> <clears throat> if there's not enough setups, then you have to come back tomorrow. Okay, if the market's being really crappy, just waiting for the for the top of the hour to start trading again, that's not good enough. You have to come back tomorrow. And you have to make that determination. But if you're down five hundred dollars, you need to walk away, at least for an hour. At least wait till the top of the hour to start trading again. You need to cool off, cool your jets. Get your emotions calmed back down. Have a little bit more clear head. Look at the chart again. Re reassess everything. Go back and look at the longer term charts. I'm a top down trader. Top down trader means I like to look at the long term charts and then the middle term charts, the shorter term charts, and then the smallest time frame charts. I like to execute on the one minute chart, but I like to trade the trends of the two minute chart. So this market's reversing right now. The question is, you can see we're in a, a, a nice downtrend on the on the Nasdaq. So this is definitely from the from the um, yellow bar or the yellow dot, the average true range. We crossed the average true range at 730, and the market's been going down ever since. It's not been real tradable. It's, it's been kind of choppy and back and forth and lots of topping and bottoming tails. We did get a nice drop right here, and this was the confusing drop because it was dropping while the, the Dow was rallying. So we could have gone for a reversal off of this high peak, off this ABC pattern right here. So we had this A, B, C pattern, and it went up. Look at that. Touched the 100% on the Fibonacci projection right to the number. I want to teach you, I mentioned earlier, I was going to teach you a lesson about the Fibonacci bow tie. So the Fibonacci bow tie 
but I wanted to watch the market too. <clears throat> and I wanted to come over and look at the top down strategy. I'm just talking about so many things in one time, so many things to teach. So here is the two minute chart. So here's the two minute chart. And uh, you can see that it's been a little bit indecisive as well on some of these markets, especially the Dow, because you can see the high and the low. And the two minute chart smooths things out a little bit. It's not quite so choppy, but you can see that we have this, this high up here. So it went up and tested the previous high. We got this low that's been established down here. So this is our natural channel from the opening bell. So remember when I first said, I like to wait for the first 5, 10, 15, maybe even 30 minutes. So we've been into this market for 30 minutes. And so now we've established the top and the bottom. So we have the high and the low. The market's going sideways. Now the question is, is it going to break out and start to be a bullish market, stay above the VWAP and continue higher and have a bullish day? Or is it going to continue to do this little snaky dance thing? Now remember, there's one up for every down. Okay, the only thing we, it makes it easy to think about. There's one up for every down and the, these blue lights and of course the ATR on the one minute chart tell you whether you're in the up or whether you're in the down. So if you can read the blue lights on the longer term time frame, I like to do that on the two minute, the five, anything above one minute, I like to use the bulls and bears. The bulls and bears is a Fibonacci Elliott wave calculation. Okay, that's what it is. So if you're not familiar with Elliott wave and, and Fibonacci, you need to learn those. Because those are kind of like when you're building a house, they're the concrete that everything sits on top of. They are your foundation. And then everything else that people talk about, whether it's reoccurring price patterns, momentum, indicators, whatever, is stacked on top of the foundation. So the foundation is Fibonacci and Elliott Wave. And so if you don't know and understand Fibonacci and Elliott Wave, you're building your house on sand. There, there's a metaphor for you. Okay, so don't build your house on sand. You need to have the knowledge. And if you don't know, what that is the best place to learn it of course is my book okay is my book that you can get on amazon stock market playbook of strategies 180 pages and it talks about extensively about how we set the platform or the foundation for fibonacci and elliott wave those are your probabilities of rising and falling markets and of course those go hand in hand with the wyckoff theory of accumulation and distribution so when you're using Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, you also need to be very mindful of Wyckoff accumulation distribution. Remember, the Fibonacci and Elliott Wave is the, um, the probabilities of the market going one direction or the other. That's your probabilities. Just like sitting at the blackjack table, you have a probabilities card. In that book, there is a probabilities table that teaches you what the probabilities are based on the fundamentals or the foundational uh elliott wave and fibonacci system on what everything else does okay so you say well i trade this indicator macd or i trade that indicator stochastics or i trade this indicator rsi that's fine you can do all that neat stuff if you want to i like i'm a little bit more of a momentum guy so i look for momentum trends and trends and continuation trends and patterns and i like to use the simple indicators but you know, you can use all that stuff to help you. Stochastics is great. RSI is great. But they are the they sit on the foundation of Fibonacci and Elliott Wave. If you don't know Fibonacci and Elliott Wave, you only know half the picture. So you got to get that knowledge. And you can get that. The best place, in my opinion, is my book because I've taken all that information from all these different sources and compiled it and put them together and showed you how they work one with the other. And then the reoccurring price patterns, we talk about those and the patterns. Now remember, there's one up for every down. We just don't know how far the up and the downs are going to go. Sometimes it gets wacky and goes sideways and doesn't make ups and downs. And that's when we need to not trade, right? But now we're in a down. So up here, this on the two minute chart, we're now in a down, right? We're just broke down and it's coming as breaking that blue light. And we would expect it to continue down. This is the CMF. And if you're not, oh, I'm sitting here talking to you about the chart and I'm not even showing it to you. See, I, I'm still new at this. I apologize. So here we are looking at one up and one down. So there's our down. There's our up. Here's our down. This is on the Dow. I'll blow that up, make it a little bit bigger for you. This is the two minute chart. I like to execute on the one minute chart, but I like to trade the trends of the two minute chart. So we're still very neutral in here. And if you remember the daily chart, we were kind of in that point of a triangle wedge formation anyway very neutral not really in a trend one way or the other so we didn't really have a bias one direction or the other and this market's just being neutral right now we'll just kind of sit and watch it not exactly sure which way to go 
we need it to break out one direction and start showing that we're bullish or break out the other direction, and start showing that we're bearish, but we have one up for every down. And so we just kind of watch this and then we'll anticipate that it's going to come down here. And at some point it's going to turn and start to rally and we'll draw another up and we'll have another uptrend line. And we'll just anticipate that the market's going to continue to rally up. So how far is it down? Is it going to come? Well, nobody knows, but we have Fibonacci to help us. Fibonacci is a measuring tool. Everybody gets all nervous about Fibonacci. Fibonacci is nothing but a ruler. It's just a ruler that we use to project or to measure different markets, okay? So it's a ruler that comes in here, and we have a Fibonacci tool in here. We go from A, B, C patterns. We just use A, B, C patterns. See that? So there's your high A, your low B, back up to your high C, and then we project the next leg down. So 100% would be the full ABC retracement, and then this would be out into projections. Okay, so it's projecting beyond the 100. Now, in Fibonacci, 61.8 is the golden ratio. So the market has a tendency to pull back 61.8 against the previous trends. So we broke the 61.8, we're headed for 100, and 130.9 is the golden ratio to the long side. All right, so we have a golden ratio to the to the retracement side, which is 61.8, and then to the projection side is 130.9. Those are two golden ratios. Those are the numbers you have to keep in mind. Very important numbers for us when we're trading. All right. Now, the, the, the point that I wanted to make for you here is I wanted to show you the Fibonacci bow tie. Now, the bow tie is really super important because it's where we understand market dynamics. Okay, so I'm going to scoot this off the screen just for a second. I'm going to show you what a Fibonacci bow tie is. Markets move in waves. They come up, they go back, they move up, they go back, they move up like that, right? We know that markets move in waves. They don't always go in, in this is an Elliott wave, actually. X, one, two, three, four, five. That's an Elliott wave. So everybody gets scared about Elliott waves. Oh, Elliott wave, so scary. No, it's not. It just means two ABC, row, two ABC patterns in a row. That's all an Elliott wave is. So you just count those two ABC patterns in a row and you got an Elliott wave. That's not scary. Fibonacci. Oh, it's Fibonacci scary. It's not scary. It's just a ruler that we use to measure the legs of the moves of the market. That's all Fibonacci is. So Fibonacci is a way that we measure the market went from A to B, pulled back to C. C was about 61.8. Then we anticipate it moving once again up, breaking a previous high, pulling back again. And then we take our Fibonacci ruler and we come up here and we just measure it again, just like that. So we go up here from C to D, we measure our Fibonacci, it pulls back into the Fibonacci, what I call the Fibonacci sweet spot. Everybody gets all nervous about Fibonacci 61.8, 50%. Oh, it didn't hit 61.8, your Fibonacci thing didn't work. It's a ruler, people, it's a ruler. Don't get all nervous and upset because it didn't, we're not engineers here. We're coming in here and it comes back down into what I call the Fibonacci sweet spot, somewhere between 38.2 and 61.8, and then turns and rallies once again. That's what we would expect, right, for a, an Elliott wave that gives us two ABCD patterns in a row. That's all we're looking for. It's not rocket science, okay? Now, what is the Fibonacci bow tie? The Fibonacci bow tie tells us that the market has a tendency to rally off of the high, pull back, rally back up to here, come back, and then tie off the bow tie at this level here. That's the Fibonacci bow tie. All right. So it's called, you've, you, you might have heard, areas of support become resistance, areas of resistance become support. So what happens is the market has a tendency to fall, it pulls back to the 61.8, then we get a projection, and we want that market to go a full 100% more of the distance of the first run. So if this run was from A to B, we expect C to D to do the exact same thing, okay? So it pulls back half. That means it's got to go back up a full amount, a back up to the 100% would bring it up into here, or up into even 130.9 is even better. But then where do we expect it to pull back to? Well, we expect it to pull back to 61.8. Well, where's 50 to 61.8, the Fibonacci sweet spot? It should be right at this peak here. So that's where the pullback is. And if you draw a line between the pullback and the, where this, this previous peak was out into the future, once it breaks above it, that's your target for your support level for it to come back to. And if you tie it off, and it looks like a Fibonacci, it looks like a bow tie. Okay. And you get two or three of those in a row, you get a full Elliott wave pattern. That's a Fibonacci bow tie. The mark goes up, comes back, hits that previous level, bounces, starts to rally once again. Now that would be in a perfect world. Are we in a perfect world? Hardly ever. But nonetheless, that's how this thing works. All right.
And that's all lined out. You're like, oh, man, that's wonderful information. Uh, where is that? Oh, that's all lined out and highlighted. And I teach you all that in my book. Okay, so all that stuff is in a in my book. Just go get the book. All right. Okay, let's get back to the market. Now, what are we seeing here? We're seeing a little double top up in here. So what happened? We had a failure of the Fibonacci bow tie, didn't we? So if we come in, and I'm going to come in, we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. And we would expect the market to go up that Fibonacci trend, which it did not, and come up to the 100% level, and then turn, hit 100. Of course, we like it to go to 130.9. And then come back down and touch where this horizontal line across here. That would have been a bow tie. But it didn't fulfill the bow tie. It should have gone higher. It didn't. So it failed. Okay, well, let's look at the bow tie to the downside. Okay, we're going to come in here and we're going to say, okay, we're going to come in and we can't trade this market. So it's been too weak. So we'll just do a lesson. So we come in here. This is A, B, C. So this was a projection. This is 100%, breaking a bull oil to 100%. We want it to come down to 130.9, right? Down in here, even 161.8 would be beautiful. And so we would expect it to break and continue down into a lower position. We would want it to be at least 100, right? 100 would be the same distance that it went from A to B from C to D. But if we could get it to come down to 130.9, 161.8, we would then look for it to come back and retrace. So let's take our Fibonacci measurement tool and we're going to go in here and we're going to say A and we'll look for the bow tie. B and we want it to come down to where? About 200 which would be 100% or even a little shallow but we're going to go all the way to 200. So this is our goal. We want to see it come down and make a reflection and I got to go squeeze the chart down a little bit more. But you can see that we're coming down here. This is where we'd expect this market to go on a Fibonacci projection if it went doubled the amount of distance from A from A to B, from B to C, we would expect it then to retrace once it hits down in this region back up to the Fibonacci bow tie. So we're going to look for it to break below this line here. I know it seems like a bunch of mumbo mumbo jumbo sometimes, but this is how you project market directions and where you can anticipate markets going, and this is what you look for. So remember, it still has this one up for every down, one up for every down, okay? And this down, we want it to continue down, break those blue lights and come down into this region down here in the chalk and money flow, if you haven't, uh, and which would give us this little green area like this. We should get another one of those down here. And this is where we would turn. And down in here, we'd start to rally once again, come back up and test this previous high. That would be our Fibonacci bow tie, all right? So this is a very important spot right here. It's going to come down and it's going to test that previous low. It's testing the, the, the blue lights or the, the VWAP. We want to see that thing break. We might get a little bit of a pullback, a bounce off of there. A couple little nice green bars would be beautiful. And then a continuation of the downtrend to get this thing down. We've got some bad news. So that would correspond with what we got on the news. The news was bad. Everything going up in price. Um, we did get people buying a little bit more. They've been holding off. They haven't been buying because everything's so expensive. And now things have gone even more expensive, even more expensive. So just getting ridiculous how expensive everything's getting. Inflation is real. All right. So this is what we're looking for. We want to see a little hesitation in the trend. We want to see a little break and give us the opportunity to go short right here. So that's what we're looking for. One up for every down. We just don't know how long the ups and downs are going to be. So we might look for a little up right here and then another down. And that's what I would like to see. I would like to see this thing come down, give us a little retracement up in here, maybe a couple bars, and then a drop down all the way down into 200 would be really nice. And then we'd get a full retracement. We could get a retracement all the way back up to the Fibonacci bow tie. And we could trade both of those and make a lot of money. So that's what we look for. We're kind of bearish on the market with a little bit of a retracement. Let's come back over to our one minute chart where we're going to execute. Actually, let me bring this one back. And then we're going to go to the one minute charts. Okay, so there's a big, beautiful reversal on that Dow. So while we were watching our lesson, this market just dropped like a rock. What a beautiful downtrend. 
So we had, you know what, look at how nice the Dow did on the downtrend. And then on the, um, the NASDAQ, we didn't get that, that kind of an ugly little sad drop down in there. Had the first one that was going in counter trend. So notice the counter trend between the Dow and the NASDAQ. The Dow was dropping nicely. The NASDAQ was rising nicely. That's bad. We don't want to see that. Now look at the S&P and the Russell. Those two look almost exactly the same. Their trend looks almost exactly the same. So we're getting that downtrend. We want to see this thing break and become bearish, and, the, and it has, but we want to see it continue now. If we want to see the, the Fibonacci projection or the bow tie off of the two-minute, this is where we're coming down. We're testing this low right here. We would expect the extension, right, or the, or the retracement. So there's our low. Oh, I'm just going to draw that line in there right there. So there's our low. It's bouncing off that line right now. I would like to see it go up, break the the yellow dots. I want to see a little bit of a pullback right here. And then a continuation of the downtrend. I want to see it. I would really like to see it break up here a little bit. Give us a shelf. See how this little shelf right in here? I call them shelves. They're flags, pennants, lots of different names for them. This is a little wedge pattern in here. You can see that little wedge pattern down here. I'm looking at the NASDAQ. And so that little wedge right there, and then the market dropped out the bottom of that little wedge. I love those. Those are beautiful little patterns. And then the market took off and dropped again. So here's another little wedge pattern right here. Got the little three, nice little downtrend, the pullback, and then the wedge. Now this one, the problem with the wedge didn't fall. That was ugly. That would have stopped us out with a loss. But this one didn't. This one wedged nicely, and then it fell. This one here wedged nicely, gave us a little pennant formation or a little wedge or whatever you want to call it i call them flags the market's flagging so that's a flag i call them shelves they just look like little little shelves in here these little shelves are great things to be trading so those are you take the short positions out of the bottom of those shelves so now let's look for this thing to come back up now we get may get a full retracement it did come back and test that previous low but the fibonacci on the two minute chart was a projection to the downside we want to see it drop and continue lower so we're bearish on this market now, and we want to see this little wedge or this little pattern to come in here. And then we'd want to see it break that and continue that downtrend. Now, the problem that sometimes happens is the market comes down like this, makes a nice long move, it makes a pullback, and then you expect it to fall again and continue the downtrend. But instead, it's got other ideas and it just goes sideways. Or... It turns and goes, rallies up, and you don't go long with it because you're anticipating a fall in price. So look at the NASDAQ. That thing's shooting like a rocket ship back up again. So now you just have to wait again and see. There were a couple opportunities to get in there on that downtrend if we would have wanted to. They weren't very strong, but what you look for on the high Kanashi bars, when the market's coming down like this, and you're like, well, I want to get into this trend. How do I get in? Where do I get in? Where do I get in? Well, you have to wait for the market to kind of settle down. You got lower high, lower high, or sorry, lower low, lower low, lower low, lower low. And then you got one little hesitation right there where you got a higher low. That's your entry point. So you then say, if it breaks below that, I'll get in and risk one price bar back and then put that on the yellow dots and then just trail down on the yellow dots or trail. I like to trail one price bar back until it gets to break even and then stick it on the yellow dots. And that would have worked just fine on that one. So then you got lower, low, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low. And then you got a higher low right there. And if you'd have been aggressive, you could have got in right there too, but that wouldn't have got you very far, but maybe a little bit. So now what we've got is we're getting a full reversal. <laughs> So we can start trading this because there's two schools of thought right now. There's what, what's everybody thinking? You got to think about what everybody else is thinking. Lots of people are seeing this and they're saying, Hey, this is a reversal and we got three, four nice green bars. So they're going to say, what we're going to get is we're going to get a little pullback and then a continuation of the uptrend. All right. That's that can happen very easily. We take our Fibonacci ruler. We throw that in there. We expect it to come back to how far, 50, 61.8, back up into the Fibonacci sweet spot, right up in here somewhere. This is what a lot of people are looking at, all right? That's a lot, that's that's a strong school of thought. 
Lots of people are thinking that. So now you got to take that into consideration. But for us, oh, I got to get my order in here. I'm sitting here jabbering and not getting my order in. I want to do. But for us, we're saying we want to see a continuation of the downtrend. So we had bearish news. We want that to be a rally and then a continuation of the downtrend. So there's people thinking both things. It can go either direction. That's what makes a market rally and fall. And that's also what gives a market indecision and makes it go sideways. You got people thinking it's going to go long, so they're looking to go long. It's got people thinking it's going to go short, so it's going to try to make it go short. And that's where the bulls and bears come in. And then you have to have a decision point. Well, is it going to go long or is it going to short? So we're going to take the short on the first side because our, our bias is to the downside, right? We're bearish because we believe that the market's going to make this ABC reflection. It's bearish in the news. We think the market's going to go down. So we're taking a short position up here off the Dow. And I should probably do it off of the S&P <laughs> just because the Dow's been kicking our butts lately. So let me clean all these drawings off. Now, if, it, now if this is a, a small reversal and then it wants to go back up, we can then come in here. I put in quantity three, drop this in, and we start trailing with a trailing stop to go the other direction off of the reversal, because we can play both directions. We can be, we can, we can. I don't care which direction you want to go, market. Just get off the pot and go, go one direction or the other. Continue with your beautiful downtrend. That's what we really want. But otherwise, let's let's. Get off the pot and go long, and that's okay, too. We'll do that, too. Either one. We don't care. We just want you to go because now we're bracketing the market, okay? So we have a bracket where we're taking a short position, but we have a trailing stop, which would reverse our position and take us back long if it wants to break and go long again. Okay, we're see how it moved for me automatically? I, I don't really wanna, I want to – I don't want to lose the view of the other three markets, but I also want to blow this up so you guys can see it a little bit better. So we're just going to have to sacrifice. Okay, so see how that's set up? I'm short off of that first break of the green bar to the downside. I put the stop in there, which is a trailing stop, and you want to see my settings for that order tool. I've cleaned everything out of here so you guys can see more cleanly what's going on. Those are my settings for my auto trailing stop. Now, the reason I don't have an attached stop and attached limit on this strategy is because I want to put in another reversal stop with a higher quantity. And when you do OCOs, they have to be tied because we send... Um, the order to the exchange with a single with a single card. And so the quantity has to be the same for the stop, the limit, and the order. That's called an OCO, and it goes to the exchange all three at once so that they know they're connected. I want to disconnect them because I don't want the quantities to be the same. Okay, see how that dropped for me automatically and moved to break even? Now what I'm going to do is because I'm at break even, I'm not going to reverse. I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to go to one. Now, if I get stopped out, I stop out at scratch trade. If it continues to run, this will continue to trail. But now I'm at here. If I think this market's going to continue down, now we're getting a little tweezer bottom. That shouldn't have stopped right there. I don't want the, I didn't like, I don't like that. That's, that's bad news right there. That's bad news. A tweezer bottom at 35030. Both of those coming down and stopping at the exact same price. That's bad news. So we might get stopped out here. This market's going to turn around and bounce us out. Come on. Spank it. Spank it. Go the other way. This way. This way. Man, we just got stopped out. We made 50 bucks. One up for every down. There's our shelf. So the shelf went up. The shelf went down. The market went up. The market went down. Now it may still stay below those yellow dots and continue down again, but it's being stupid. It should have gone decisively in our favor. Now it's going to go up. It's going to stab that yellow light. Now watch. This is a sell signal right there. If you want to be aggressive, you can hit your sell button right there and take a short. I don't like that aggressive move because that could also be a reversal and go long and take off and go to the upside. Remember, we have all these guys saying that the market's going to go long. So this is your Fibonacci projection here. Come down A, B, C. Here's 100%, 130.9, 160, 200. 
we would want it to come back up if we're going to go long now go all the way back up to 130.9 or 161.8 and then come back down and tie off that fibonacci bow tie so this is now bullish because that double little double bottom right down in there ends up with an abc pattern indicating that the market's reversing we're no longer making lower lows we're now making higher lows and higher lows and higher highs is the definition of an uptrend, right? Lower high, lower lows and lower highs is the definition of a downtrend. So lower lows, lower highs, definition of a downtrend. Higher highs, higher lows, definition of an uptrend. So now the market's coming up. It's testing this previous high right here. Let's go back so we can see the whole market, see what the other markets are doing. So the NASDAQ broke those two, that pullback, and, and is, is rallying strong right there. So did the, the Russell, and so did the, the S&P. So this is all bullish right here. We could have done a reversal and taken the long position out of here, but we were bearish on the market, anticipating a continuation of the downtrend. That didn't happen. It bounced off that blue uh, VWAP, and now it's starting to rally once again. We could have taken the reversal and that's you know what we should have done <clears throat> in hindsight and we're missing this run too ah what a day all right guys i've been here an hour with you we'll watch this i'm going to reset come back at nine o'clock and we'll start watching it again i like to trade from the top of the hour after you have a little bit of this you know we had a good lesson though today we talked a little bit we learned about top down we talked about um, Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, patterns, recurring price patterns. We talked about several things. Uh, I wanted to end with a little, I want to end with a little lesson. I always like to have another little lesson before we go. Look at these markets. They're actually not doing too bad. We should have just reversed on that. I kind of feel bad I didn't, but anyway, can't have FOMO. So... Here's my lesson for the day. Let's end with our little lesson. A trader's state of mind. Okay. A trader's state of mind. To grow as a trader, always try to trade on the very edge of your comfort zone. Trading larger size is how you increase profits. It's also how you increase losses. So you have to be careful saying, well, all I have to do is do what I just did with 10 contracts or 15 contracts and I'll make a whole lot more money. Well, you can also lose a whole lot more money too, but that's how we increase size. So that's why we have to find consistency in our trading. We have to be able to um, make sure that what we're doing is not taking big risks. Cut your losers short, let your winners run. Once you get a little buffer, get some green underneath you, then you can be a little bit more aggressive and let things go. But in the beginning, when the first hour or the first hour and a half, two hours of the day, it's all about just getting green. Don't let that market go deep against you. Once you get green, you get up to three, four, five hundred dollars $500, then you can take some bigger risks at the top of the hours of say come around and you can start you know, building yourself up a little bit bigger position. Trading on the edge of your comfort zone always allows you to continually push yourself as a trader to achieve greater and greater growth potential. So that's how you have, that's how you grow. You don't have to catch longer trends to make more money, which is nice though. You just use larger share size or larger, a larger number of contracts for smaller moves. And then that's how you increase your share. But you have to get good at being able to predict the market and knowing which direction the market's going to go. And that's what all this analysis is about, right? The Fibonacci numbers, where you're going to take that risk, trailing your stop to break even, getting on to the yellow dots and letting it trail out, all that kind of stuff. That's what this is all about. All right. So the biggest thing is today, I want you to support our sponsor, Pit News Magazine. So everybody run over, pick up Pit News Magazine. The new version's about ready to come out. Um, it's a beautiful magazine, has audio in it, has video in it. This uh, this month, we're going to be featuring David Duty. David Duty is a partner over at Trade Mentors, and he has a trading strategy that's a real high probability trading strategy that he loves. And so he's going to be highlighting that and showing people how he trades in Pit News Magazine. He's got a video that's going to show you the strategy. And so I would recommend you go pick up Pit News Magazine. And Pit News Magazine, actually, if you use my coupon code, go over to pitnews.com, use my coupon code. 
LAN Live dash one dollar. It's right down there on the bottom of the screen. LAN Live dash one dollar. And you can get the entire year's subscription for only one dollar. One dollar. And that's 12 issues. Audios, it's like an audio book for all the articles. Video, you can read the articles. I've got a great article in the last month's issue that you'll get if you go over there and subscribe right now. You get the uh, article on the hike, or not on Hike and Ashy, sorry. Yeah, there's Hike and Ashy stuff in there too, I think. But you get the um, chalk and money flow. So there's a real nice article I wrote in there on the chalk and money flow that'll teach you about that, which comes right out of the manual. So, you know, well, it's a little bit more extensive in the article. I went into greater detail, but uh, it's part of the book. If you go get the book off of Amazon. All right, guys, you can see in hindsight how easy this is. Not quite so easy in the live trading, but it should be. It doesn't seem too hard if you just got the right tools and you're just counting and measuring and looking for the markets to have lots of flat bottom green bars that's all we're looking for or flat top red bars and trade the flat reversals that's all you have to do just trade the reversals take small risks and let your winners run all right i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna come back at nine o'clock reset and start trading once again yesterday i did that ended up with a pretty good afternoon so had a little struggle in the morning with you guys and then came back in the afternoon, had a really good day. So we'll see what happens and um, we'll let you go and we'll catch you not tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. I take Fridays off. We'll see you on Monday. I'll do this again on Monday. We'll see you on Monday.